In this video, I'll be showing you how I made this terrarium that even has a flowing stream. Let's get straight into the build. I'll be using this glass tank that measures 30 by 10 by 16. Let's start with the drainage layer. I needed something that would act as a filter and as a drainage layer at the same time. This coarse filter foam was the perfect material to use. I cut it to size off camera and then placed it inside the terrarium. This would do a great job at keeping the water clean and keeping unwanted materials out of the pump. It's also extremely lightweight. Talking about the pump, here's the one I'll be using. It's a low power adjustable aquarium pump. To fit it inside, I had to cut the wire. The end would then fit through this small hole and then I'd reattach them together. I'll show you how I do this later on in the build. I then removed the filter foam and cut out a square which the pump can fit into. To do this, I simply used some scissors. I then put the drainage layer back in and done a quick test fit with the pump. It fit in perfectly, so it's time to move on. Now I actually want to start making the stream. I want it to run down from the top left corner all the way down to the bottom right. And I want to make it look as if it carries on out the tank and not just end in a pool of water. To build the stream, I'm going to be using black lava rock. I think their detailed and textured look will be perfect for this build. I've got a decent amount that all range in size that I'm going to be using. I firstly placed in some filter foam to build some height which will make it easier to build the stream. This will help create a tapered slope which the water can naturally flow down. As you can see it's taller on the left and gradually gets shorter. Now I'm going to take the black lava rock and start building. This part did take some time and I did have to start over a fair few times. But that's all part of the building process and it's definitely worthwhile when you finally come up with a decent layout. Slowly piece by piece the stream was starting to take shape. Here's the main structure of the black lava rock fully complete. There's still a lot of work to do before it becomes a functioning stream, but it's definitely getting closer. Next I used the super glue and tissue method to secure all the rocks together. These long glue nozzles really come in handy here. I tear off small pieces of tissue, wedge them in between the rocks and then soak them in glue. This creates a strong bond that would dry quickly. I went on to repeat this for the rest of the rocks. Here's the front piece of the stream all glued together. It's sturdy enough to be held which is great and I can cover up all the white glue marks later on. I then repeat the same process for the back part of the stream. I want to use expanding foam to hold these together and form the bottom part of the stream. But before I can do this I need to create a temporary bond between the front and back part of the stream. This way I can remove the stream from the tank and join it with expanding foam. I join both halves together by attaching cocktail sticks with hot glue. This actually worked out better than I expected as it held both halves in place really well. Before I can add the spray foam, I need to add something to the bottom of the stream to stop it from expanding too much. I had some leftover pieces of filter foam which would work great. I wedged them in place between the rocks and tried not to leave any large gaps as the foam would find its way through. Here's all the filter foam in place. Now it's time to add the spray foam. I gave it a good shake, applied the nozzle and then started to apply it. When adding the foam it's important to apply less than you might think. It does expand a lot. I tried my best to do this as neatly as possible and only get it on the rocks that it needs to be. Here's how it looks after about 15 minutes. As you can see, it's expanded a lot. And the filter foam has done a great job at stopping it expanding into the stream. At this point, whilst it's still soft, I use my hands to press the foam down into place. This helps create the basic shape so I haven't got to do any carving later on. I then left it for another half hour and here's how it's looking. It's definitely not completely cured yet, but it's dried enough so we can move on. Whilst the foam was still relatively soft, I pulled out all the filter foam down the centre. A lot of these didn't come out perfectly, but that doesn't matter at all. So long as the bottom is covered in foam and there's no massive holes, it should work fine. Whilst the foam finishes up drying, I'm going to cover up all the glue marks with super glue and crushed lava rock. As you can see, there's a fair few spots to cover up. To do this, I simply apply some super glue and then sprinkle on some crushed lava rock. I pour off the excess and as you can see, it creates a seamless bond between the two rocks. I repeat this for every single glue joint. With all the glue marks covered up, the stream looks 10 times better. All the joints look a lot more natural and it's also helped improve the joint's strength. With the foam pretty much cured, I then went on to remove the wooden braces. I was a bit nervous at this point as I wasn't sure how well the foam would hold. But to my surprise it held really well and the piece was extremely sturdy. 
Before moving on, I gave it a quick test fit to see how it looked. All is good, so it's time for the next step. Now I need to cover the bottom of the stream. To do this, I'm going to use more crushed lava rock and hold it in place with silicone. It's very important to use aquarium grade silicone or 100% silicone. I applied the silicone in small sections at a time to avoid it curing before getting the lava rock in. I applied a generous amount and then spread it out with my finger. An old paintbrush came in handy to get the silicone into small gaps and cracks. I then poured in a good amount of crushed lava rock onto the wet silicone and then used my finger to push it down into place. I then poured out the excess into a tub. As you can see, the result looks great. There's a few gaps and cracks which can easily be covered. I repeated the same process for all the exposed foam. If you wanted to try making something like this yourself, I'll have links to all the materials I've used in the description below. Here's how it looks after I covered everything up and left it to dry for 24 hours. I'm very happy with how it's looking so far and it was exactly what I was going for. I used some filter foam to temporarily elevate the stream inside the tank. It's all looking good so I'm going to use some more black lava rock to build a wall on the front left part of the stream. I attached the pieces with super glue and tissue and covered them the same way I did before. I also covered some of the expanded foam with crushed lava rock and super glue. I'm really liking how it's looking, so now I'm going to install the pump and do a test run. I'm just using this small, cheap pump that has an adjustable flow. I'm going to use it on its weakest setting. I feed the wires through the hole in the top of the tank, install the pump and then put in the stream. I'll be able to easily hide the wire when it comes to planting. With some tubing, I created this outlet. I simply made a hole in the tube and then added a 90 degree joint. I secured it with super glue and even sprinkled on some crushed lava rock to make the joint stronger. To cover up the hole in the top, I simply wedged in some fine filter foam. I then installed the tubing and placed the stream back in place. Now I'm going to quickly show you how I join the wires back together. I'm by no means an electrician, but this is how I do it. I simply twisted the brown wires back together and then wrapped some electrical tape around them. I then did the same with the blue wires. I always like to individually wrap them before covering them both in more electrical tape. Here's the result and I've had no problems with this in the past. Next I went on to pour in some water so I can test the pump. I made sure to pour enough in so the intake of the pump was underwater. I then plugged the pump in and here's how it went. It made a lot of noise at first but once all the air bubbles were out it was pretty much silent. The flow's perfect and everything's really starting to come together. After the test run I removed the stream and then siphoned out the water. Next I'm going to cover the pump in filter foam to help stop any unwanted materials getting inside. I used some scissors to cut out the rough shape of the tubing and the wire. This will also provide a platform that the stream can sit on. I then placed the stream back in for the final time. As it is, the outlet for the pump is very exposed. And although it could be hidden with plants, I wanted to use some lava rock to create a structure around it. Here's what I came up with. I'm not going to cover the glue marks as I can cover this with moss later. I then took some small pieces of lava rock and filled in any holes in the front. The hardscape's almost complete, but I felt like it can do with something to contrast the lava rock. These spiderwood branches would work perfectly. I experimented with a few different pieces and layouts until I found something I was happy with. Here's the final hardscape. I didn't go too overboard with the spiderwood and secured it in place with the super glue and tissue method. I'm really liking how this terrarium's looking so far. For the substrate of this terrarium, I'm going to use aqua soil. This terrarium is going to have constant water flowing through the substrate, so I needed to choose something that wouldn't have a problem with this. As aqua soil is obviously primarily used in aquariums, it won't have a problem with water running through it. My regular terrarium substrate mix would not be suitable for this build. I used a spoon to pour a good amount of aqua soil throughout the terrarium and then gently patted it down into place. Here's how the terrarium's looking with the substrate in. As you can see, I've got a decent amount of aqua soil in the back, which will make the plants sit higher and help them fill out the background. With the substrate done, it's finally time to bring this terrarium to life with plants. I'm primarily going to be using immersed grown aquarium plants for this setup, as I think they'll be best suited for the environment in this terrarium. I've got a good variety of plants that all range in different leaf shapes, textures and sizes. I'll put their names up on screen when it comes to adding them to the tank. To start off, I took the plants out their pots and removed all the rock wool. 
This hygrophila's roots had grown so much that I had to cut it out of the pot. After removing all the rock wool, it was time to start planting. I started with this bulbitis. I split it up into a few separate plants which I can plant around the tank. I primarily want to plant it up in the left corner. This plant is an epithyte and should not be planted into the substrate. Instead, just wedge it in gaps and cracks. I love the look of this plant and think it's done a great job at hiding the wire and the tubing. Next I wanted to plant a few more small pieces on the inside of the stream. To do this I simply used some super glue to glue them in place. This won't hurt the plant but try not to use too much super glue. Even with just the bulbitis in the terrarium has already sprung to life. Next I'm going to plant this hygrophila. Let me show you a quick tip that will help you get more plants than what you paid for. Simply cut or break the stem in half. On the bottom half it's got these small baby shoots that will soon start growing and the top half will send out new roots from the stem in as little as a week. This means you can get at least two independent plants from a single stem and will definitely help you save money on buying plants. With some long tweezers, I planted the hygrophila in the background. I used some scissors to cut off any damaged leaves. I'm then gonna plant more hygrophila all along the back of the stream. I chose this plant as I love the shape of its leaves and think it would do a great job at covering up the background. Next, I planted some crypts. I think their more rounded leaf shape helps bring a nice variety to the plants inside this terrarium. As I briefly mentioned earlier, I'm only going to be using immersed grown aquatic plants in this setup. Although I'm sure terrestrial terrarium plants would do well in here as well, this terrarium provides ideal conditions for immersed aquatic plant growth. It's going to be very humid with a constant stream of water flowing through and oxygenating the roots of the plants. This will provide optimal growing conditions. One downside to using aquatic plants is that they're prone to drying out, so I had to constantly spray them down. I'm going to plant this Monte Carlo in the front to carpet the foreground. It's a small leafed, fast growing plant. All I did was place it on top of the substrate and gently press it down. Its roots will soon shoot down into the substrate and start spreading. I also planted a little bit in the background and I'm hoping it'll creep down over the stream. Next I took some Anubius and Bucephalandra and planted them throughout the terrarium. I absolutely love both of these plant species and I think they'll do a great job at bringing some texture and detail to this scape. Similar to the Bulbitis, these are epithytes. This means they should not be planted into the substrate but instead you can wedge them in gaps and cracks or even mount them to a rock. With the plants in, it's now time to start planting the moss. For this terrarium, I'm only going to be using this Java moss. It's a fast growing, diverse species of moss that I think will be well suited to this tank. I used some super glue to attach the java moss to the lava rock. This won't hurt the moss at all, but try not to use too much as it will leave white marks, which don't exactly look too natural. I used more java moss to hide the output of the pump. Here's a quick tip that will help promote new and dense growth from the moss. Take some scissors and trim the moss up as small as you can, and then simply place it where you want in the terrarium. By trimming it up, it stimulates new growth and multiple growth points to grow from. At this point, I primarily planted it on the lava rock, trying my best to hide any glue marks. The terrarium's almost complete and I'm extremely happy with how it's looking. I went on to carefully fill up the terrarium with water. I filled it up until the intake of the pump was fully submerged. Before turning the pump on, I went on to add some springtails. In case you didn't know, these are tiny little bugs that will literally clean the terrarium 24-7. They eat things like mold and decaying matter, which could be harmful to the fine balance of the terrarium's ecosystem if left unchecked. Now it's finally time to plug in the pump and let the stream flow. There was a lot of noise at first whilst the pump had some air in it, but after about 10 minutes, it was basically silent. To my surprise, the stream flowed perfectly, and I think it does look like it flows beyond the tank. Before leaving it to grow in, I attached the front piece of glass which is simply held on by a piece of tape. This makes a super easy, low budget hinge. I then left the tank to grow for four weeks. Four weeks later and the flowing stream terrarium is thriving. All the moss and plants have started growing in really well and the stream is still flowing great. You may have noticed I added some really fine sticks and twigs around the terrarium. I think they add a great level of detail to the scape. The Monte Carlo in the foreground has got a bunch of new growth points and will fill out the rest of the space in no time. One of my favourite things about this terrarium has got to be the Java moss. As you can see, it's been growing really well and has done a great job at spreading over the lava rock. 
I will give it a trim in a few weeks time to achieve a little more denser growth. The boosts of Philandra and Anubius have all been doing really well. And I even have some boost which is flowering, which is great to see. You may have noticed that there's a little bit of mould on some of the spiderwood. This is completely normal and is being taken care of by the springtails. The plants in the back have been growing really well and are doing a great job at filling out the empty space in the background. The Monte Carlo that I planted in the back is creeping over the stream just like I wanted. When spinning the terrarium round you can see that most of the plants have already established a healthy root system. And when looking a bit closer you can see some of the springtails which have been working hard keeping this terrarium clean and healthy. I'm extremely happy with how this terrarium's doing and I can't wait to see how it looks in another month's time. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future builds or updates and thank you for watching. Why not check out this video for another terrarium build?